So uh, just want to let everyone know um, we have several guests here tonight. Uh, Sheriff Mike Taylor and Deputy Tom Rourke from uh, North End of the County. And uh, they, they are both running currently for County Sheriff. Um, but their runoff will be in the general election later this year. And I just wanted to kind of point them out. They're, they're here as our guests. And uh, if you guys would like to take some time, maybe after the uh, forum, to just go up, shake your hands, say hello, introduce yourselves. And I think it would be appreciated. I think they'd like to meet. Um, with that, I'm going to turn this over to our facilitator for this evening, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, let's all stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ginger, you have the facilitator for the evening. Um, I wanted to talk first uh, a little bit about um, some ground rules for everyone, so that we all enjoy this. Ginger, you have, you. you have to hold it closer to your mouth. Sorry, can you do that? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to go over a few ground rules for all of us, so that we make sure that we have a really good experience tonight and we learn some good information about our candidates. Because that's what we're here for. So um, I would like to introduce Jonathan, and Jonathan is going to be helping out tonight, um, doing the timing for our candidates, and also watching for questions and watching for your hands to be raised. So that we've got two eyes on all of that instead of just my old eyes. So um, for the audience, <clears throat> I would like for you to ask the questions within a 30 second time period and probably what would even work better is there are some uh, note cards up on the bar there and some pens if you'd like to get uh, those and write out your question and then when you're finished we'll give you a minute here to do that Jonathan will come around and pick them up so when we get through here for just in just a second you can go do that uh, if you think of questions while everybody's talking, that's fine to raise your hand when I call for questions. But we thought this might make it a little more streamlined. Uh, we would like for you to be courteous and let people finish talking when, they're, um, when they do have something to say. <clears throat> Wait until the candidates are finished with their answers and be respectful when others are asking questions. Um, I hope that's it. And now for the candidates. So you'll have two minutes to answer your question that is posed to you. If there is a candidate that would like to say something more about whatever that question is, a rebuttal, so to speak, they may raise their hand and we can call on them and they'll have one minute to do a rebuttal. Uh, Jonathan is Thanks. going to time you. He's going to let you know at one minute, and then he's going to let you know at one minute and 30 seconds, and then we'll pull you in with the hook at two minutes. Um, I think that's it. <clears throat> if you've got any questions, now's the time to ask about the process. Okay, cards and pens are up there. Actually, cars and pens have been handed out by Gerald. Oh, thank you, Gerald. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? So, we should, we'll give you time to think about your question or write it down. We'll give you about two minutes here and then we'll get started. How's that? Oh, that'll probably be a really good idea. They think they want to be introduced. So, <laughs> that's probably a really good idea. We'll start with that. My name is. Can you hear me? Yeah, you got to hold that close. Yeah, I got to hold it. My name is Buck Magazine. I currently work for the Lake County Sheriff's Office. I've lived in Lake County since 2010. I come over here by way of Plymouth County. Before that, I was born and raised in Southern California. Ended up working on ranches 
Planet Bonanza. And uh, I decided to, I grew up, I decided to give back to the community, became a reserve deputy, like the job, ended up getting hired by Plymouth County full time at the jail. A year and a half later, I found out they didn't need 13 of us employed anymore. And I found a job over here eventually. And about a year later, well, let me step back. After we were laid off, I was lucky enough to get a, a temporary marine deputy spot over there, which they were headquartered at Search and Rescue Yard in, in Plymouth Falls. And when I started over there, they had four brand new squad cars they were putting together for the patrol deputies. And that never really did sit well with me because well, I don't need a job to feed my family, but we can buy a new car. And I eventually, I ended up coming to work here at Lake County. And a year later, when I got called back, I didn't go because our sheriff at the time, Phil McDonald, rather than when the same budget cuts happen here, rather than make the people jobless, decided we would just drive over here. And that's one thing, the fact that he put people above, above uh, appearances spoke volumes to me. So I stayed here ever since. I took a patrol position in North Lake, worked with Sergeant Moore for many years. Um, then the opportunity came to move back to Lakeview. In 2017, I did so. And here I am today. I'm, I don't know what else to say. I'm not good because I'm not a politician. I'm sorry. I'm just a guy trying to do some good things. I mean, if you got any questions, don't be ask me, please. I'll answer the best way I can. <laughs> Thank you for uh, inviting me to be here. My name is Karen Morgan. I'm from Christmas Valley, and I'm running for position three. Louder. Hold it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in Applegate, Oregon, a small agricultural um, ranching farming community. I went to Crater High School, graduated from Ashland Senior High School uh, when Ashland was a decent town. I went to um, college in England to the International University of Europe. I have a bachelor's degree in international relations. I have a background in contract administration, risk management, and claims management. I was a risk manager and contract administrator for an environmental engineering firm. Uh, we did hazardous waste cleanup for the federal government, for the state governments, and for municipalities. We also did hazardous waste cleanup for private properties. I'm very well versed in um, property law and um, in your planning ordinances. I am also a North Lake Planning Commissioner right now. I work for the um, Christmas Valley Park and Recreation District. If you've ever seen the uh, Desert Whispers, I'm the editor. I am the office manager, and since I've been with Christmas Valley Park and Recreation District, I have organized um, asset committees. So. If you're not familiar with Christmas Valley or the Park and Rec, we uh, are in charge of the lake, the, the, uh, is over the, mic closer to her mouth. Yeah. the golf course. Oh, oh. There's something happening. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Are the speakers on? No, they're not. Are they speakers on? Okay, can you hear me now? No. No, it's not. Well, maybe we'll just have to enunciate. I'll try, I'll try to speak up. I, I should be able to yell pretty loud. I have seven children. <laughs> They're all grown up now. Um, and I have six grandchildren, so uh, sometimes I get to hear my voice uh, booming across the property. So, um, so Christmas Valley Park and Recreation, we have the golf course, we have the lake, we have the airport, um, the rodeo grounds, and a community hall. And 
So the asset committees that I formed are in, are responsible, each different, uh, and they're all volunteers, by the way. Um, each different committee has a different asset. So um, I'm very proud to say that our golf course committee, last year, um, they raised fifteen thousand uh, dollars for the first ever uh, golf tournament to raise money for the golf course. So that was very good. We have a lot of um, things that we need to do for the park and rec. Uh, we have a limited budget of seventy-nine thousand dollars a year, which is um, from tax revenue. We're a special taxing district, so every penny counts. Um, our lake has never been healthier. We are. Um, attention by our committee members. Our Rodeo Grounds Committee, which I am a member of, um, I also have horses and do uh, have cows and horses. So it's a passion of mine, the Rodeo Grounds Committee and the Jim Camp ladies. So we have been having those um, every second Saturday since last year. They've been very productive. Um, we've raised some money just to put those on. We kind of uh, we kind of pin our rodeo grounds together with these materials to save money. Um, our airport committee is looking into getting a fueling station, which we don't have for airplanes, and a courtesy vehicle. We'll be having uh, our runway. Will be uh, the FAA has given us a grant to resurface our runway. That project is going forward 2023 to 2026. So I'm also the um, office manager for North Lake Health District. <laughs> At North Lake Health District, I do a very variety of things administratively, and one new thing for North Lake Health District is we're putting in a dentist's office. So, um, like I said, okay, I'm sorry. So that's all the news from North Lake County. <laughs> Thanks. Good can anyone hear me? Oh, there, there you go. go. I have no idea what's Oh, no, now it went out. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure. Maybe the batteries are dead. So, um, there's I'm extra really... batteries. What's that? There's extra batteries if you need them. Okay. Them I may change them after I'm done here. Okay. My name is James Williams. I'm currently Lake County Commissioner. I'm running for, again, for Commissioner seat number two. I was born and raised up in Summer Lake. I know most of you folks here, and I just want to appreciate and say thank you for coming out tonight. Um, am I the only one that's hearing music? No. no. Well? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. No. Thank you all for coming, and uh, I, I'll just kind of keep it short. Mark, go ahead. I'll see if I can fix the mic. All right. My apologies. Good evening. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, Mark Albertson. I'm currently the Lake County Commissioner in position number three. I was born and raised in Lake County. Um, my family homesteaded here. My, my family still is part of our homestead. That's still part of our homestead. Uh, I look forward to your questions. Uh, what I also like is any ideas that you might have to improve anything in the county. And I look forward to hearing. Thank you. Oh, Anyway, I'm Jim Hyatt. Oh, there you go. And uh, I came, moved here in 1984 to work for the MC, uh, which was a major experience my whole life. Never worked on a ranch that big. Um, and just to see things could happen on that scale was mind blowing to a young guy from a small place in North Dakota. Uh, anyway, after the MC closed, worked a little bit locally, then did drove a log truck for four years, actually five years, but anyway, uh, then I came back to Adel to work for the Crump Ranch, be the foreman, and did that for 11 years, and retired, and then did some other stuff, and then decided to go to work for the B2B Wild Horse Grazing, or Grazing, that's the other B2B people, uh, training facility, and I've been doing that since uh, 17, and it's one of the best jobs I've ever had. I enjoy it. And just to uh, kind of be quick, I agree with Mark, 
any questions you have or any ideas, I look forward to hearing them. And thank you all for coming. And uh, just on, on a note, uh, Mr. Kessner, who is the empty chair, called me today and asked me to let you know that he had a uh, personal emergency come up and couldn't make it tonight. Thank you all for coming. <coughs> We have currently one question. Any other uh, questions on notes that I can take from people? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, first question. This isn't for one person specifically, so it's going to go, all of you will have two minutes to answer this. So, what are your ideas to bring new business to Lakeview? Do you want to start, Clark? Okay, um, so I've thought a lot about this. I think Lake County could use more businesses, more jobs. I know, um, like the Revive East Street thing, a big part of it to me is encouraging people to shop local. I try to shop local as much as I can. I always think back to like say Ace Hardware. Um, that's a great place if you are doing a project and say you run out of a box of screws. And they'd rather have to go 100 miles to get a box of screws and go up there and pick some up. But on that same note, if we didn't buy other stuff there, they wouldn't be there to sell us that box of screws, right? That's kind of how I feel about local businesses. I mean, we support them, they support us. And I think we need to do more to bring local businesses in as far as capitalize on what do we, what do we have here in Lake County. We have ranching, farming, logging, and outdoor recreation. I know there's been, I've, I've seen it myself uh, with the Noni's Trail. My family's come up out of Southern California, enjoyed the heck out of those. Those people that worked on those, developed those, that's great. Um, hunting, I think a lot of that, a lot of the hunting and outdoor issues like such as that need to, to be addressed on a higher level due to, I mean, this used to be the spot everyone would come on, they still do. And that brings a lot of money in our local community. And I'm not ready? Okay. Oh, all right. Um, we have to promote growth in the county as far as maximum what we have, protect our water so that future generations of farmers can, can keep our water. But we have to do that from a good stewardship standpoint, not just rob the entire thing, because, well, I mean, then people will start, there's other issues to address. And I believe I'm running out of time. Okay, <laughs> have a good day. I'll talk to you. I'll be the head of count. Would you like me to repeat the question? No, it's okay. So I think a lot of new business, especially um, women-owned businesses and and um, people who have never been in business before. They lack the knowledge that they need in order to start that business. They don't understand the process. They don't know where to get their funding. They don't know how to prepare a business plan. So I'm not sure if Lakeview already has a business development center or someplace where people can go, maybe take a, a class on how to start their business, how to prepare their business plan, how to find financing, how to get grants if they need grants, and that kind of thing. Um, that is something that I know we don't have in North Lake County, and that is something that I would like to um, maybe, if we can't have a, a center all of its own, maybe have um, people give classes on these kind of topics at our community hall um, through Park and Rec, or have people come in and give those classes. I know that KCC has some classes that they offer. Um, but just helping people find a way to get started because it's kind of scary getting started in a business if you've never done it before. There's a lot of different things that you could do to incentivize businesses to move to Lake County. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that we have to consider is workforce housing um, and a housing for the workforce for additional businesses. Already we've seen that it's been taxed pretty heavily as far as uh, the, the pressure on housing in Lake County as a whole, not just in Lakeview. Um, we've identified over the last few years that uh, a daycare center for child care is uh, a very 
big part of what makes your workforce, um, what brings the workforce here. Uh, getting nurses at our hospital, getting employment at uh, the BLM and Forest Service. Um, if there's no daycare center, that has a big impact on your workforce. Um, we've also, we have, we do have county grant systems and, and loan systems for uh, businesses starting up. Uh, we, the KCC is coming to town and we're going to continue to try and build on our relationship with them to provide workforce training for the workforce. Um, and, uh, and overall, re releasing your community and trying to um, provide opportunity to your county and your community is really important in building that workforce up and overall bringing businesses in. Because businesses aren't going to come unless there's a workforce to build off of. No, I'm good. Um, economic development and businesses are like what I would really like to do work on. Um, so uh, my wife and I, we were a big part of building the Noni Trail. Thank you for reminding me on that one because that's um, Greg Walton, Congressman Walton came and that sign you see right out there, it was a big deal. Um, I'm in North Lake County, I'm working on a regional landfill that will employ about 30 people. Um, we have a possible green cement plant moving in. Um, and how people can start their businesses is we have over, well, right at a million dollars to loan to small businesses through SCOED, which is South Central Oregon Economic Development. Um, the county itself also has about 300,000 or just shy of 300,000 um, to loan to small businesses. Um, James brought up a great point about the housing. The housing deal is one of the biggest problems we have. If you don't have a place to live, it's hard to build a business. And so um, creative minded people can make it wherever you're at and um, there's other things that we're working on but I'm running out of time so I'll hand it to Jim. Uh, <clears throat> first thing I would be the most concerned about uh, is trying to get the businesses to stop leaving and I mean every day we hear new businesses going not just closing stores if we look out and down the streets you see all the blank windows. In 84, we came here, three drugstores, two grocery stores, seven bars. I might tell you where our barn is are, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just been sad to watch over the last 40 years, 35. Uh, and then as far as getting a new business done, as a commissioner, I would work really hard to, if, Take away some of the regulations, make them easier to navigate. Uh, I think sometimes with young people or anybody, like say without much experience, try to start a business, just the red tape is enough to make you go, I can't do this. And then we sound like we have money. But that's uh, that's where my main concerns are. Jim, just to clarify, Yes. I will do one minute. And I thought that was one second. No. <laughs> so I still got a minute. <laughs> I'll go one minute, then I'll go 30 seconds. Okay. And then I will go 10, 9. Okay. So one thing I forgot is to remind you to um, silence your cell phones. So if you have your cell phone and you haven't done that, please do that for us. So the next, is there a rebuttal here? Okay, good, we're all good. All right, next question. Do you support the compliance officer position? I do support the compliance officer position, and I'll tell you why. When a person develops their land, and they do everything that they're supposed to do, they put in their septic, they put in their, uh, they get their a building permit for their house, and they do all of their due diligence, 
and then they have someone move in next door to them who doesn't do any of that and just trashes up the land and diminishes the, diminishes the value of that other property, then that other property is also losing their property rights. So <clears throat> in order for us not to become the largest landfill in the state of Oregon, I think that our compliance officer has a job to enforce our ordinances, I and mean, they're not new ordinances, to enforce the ordinances so that we can all be proud of the place that we live. Okay, I'm, I'm very much a supportive of my, uh, compliance officer. I think he's doing a great job. I see it every day. Come up from the south end of town. You see those that lived here for several years know what it used to be like with the, the dumps and trailers and stuff sitting right along the road. Now, this kind of goes back to that, that question about inviting businesses and economic development. If you're from out of the area, taking a trip, maybe say you're from California and tired of, tired of the California thing, take a drive and you're looking for a place to settle down and open a new business, a successful business, and the first thing you see is all these rundown places and whatnot, you're going to keep driving. You're not. You're going to think this ain't the place for me. I want to go find somewhere where I don't have to look at this. So I think he's doing a, a great job, and I'd like to see him continue with that. Uh, I couldn't tell you how he. I don't know. I don't know much about the man other than I see that people are actually cleaning their places up, and they're doing a great job with it. And I, I'd like to see him keep going because that, that just makes our town look better, makes it more livable, makes it look like some place I'd want to move to. And I, and I think as a, on a county level as a whole, we need to continue with that. That's my opinion. Well, yes, I support it. I voted for it. So, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has been at the top of our radar ever since our first day in office, and I think it was something that we just didn't know how to tackle as far as hiring an enforcement officer in the county. Um, we took our first year trying to understand the budget and figure out how we could afford a full-time enforcement officer, trying to figure out how, what his goals would be and what his job would be. We had a lot of discussion over it. Um, one of the things that we prioritized was voluntary compliance. and. We wanted, to, we wanted to make sure that we did not build a position that became somewhat of a monster to where the person would be giving fines and citations in order to justify his position over time. So we just said, look, this position is paid for regardless, and we don't actually care whether he ever collects on a single fine. The goal is voluntary compliance, and we have the option and the discretion at the county level to get, forgive that debt all the way up until the point where it goes to court. We knew that code enforcement had to take place. There's no point in having codes and ordinances unless you're willing to enforce them. So we took that step, and this, that's the direction that we've continued to move in. There's still a lot of moving parts to it, and we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing by our constituents and balancing um, private property rights with what is lawful. And so there's a lot of working pieces that go into it. We're not done entirely yet. We're going to keep working at it until it's the way that our community wants it. Um, I'm very much for the nuisance. Excuse me, the code enforcement officer. Um, I was the one that kind of pushed the program along. Um, of course, the other commissioner supported me. The reason was, there's many reasons. The main reason, like up on the north end of the county, people were moving in there. Um, some of them were squatting on ground that wasn't theirs. And we base it all on fire life safety. And so if it's a fire danger, a life danger, a safety danger, we want it taken care of. Um, we had some folks up there that moved an old travel trailer onto a piece of property no water, no sewer, no electric, 
and they started dumping their byproduct, human byproducts next to the city well, one of the city wells in um, Christmas Valley. And so um, we also have to protect private property rights, uh, other people's. Um, we believe you can should be able to do what you can with your own land as long as it doesn't affect your neighbor and bring your neighbor's property taxes or property values down. And so um, the way it was set up was um, prior to us was that um, we'd send a letter and the people could talk to the commissioners to see if they had a clean up. Now we make it so you get a letter, we want voluntary compliance. If you don't, then you get a citation through the circuit court and it doesn't ever come before the commissioners. I probably agree if you're going to have a ordinance, you ought to have somebody enforcing it. Uh, I don't really have a problem with the ordinance, but I have a problem with anything we do is that it doesn't get overused. Where does it stop? I clean my place up, and then your place looks dirty. You know, it, there's always one weak link in every chain. No matter how, when you break the weakest link, the next one's going to be weak also. So on these kind of things, anytime we pass something, I think you've been real careful that you don't let it take its own life. You know, just become its own identity. Thank you. Is there any rebuttal? Okay, next question. What are your thoughts about temporary permanent housing for the homeless and unsheltered folks in our county? Um, I guess we should start at first by defining temporary. And um, what, what I see of the, the housing, the homeless, what I've personally dealt with is moving mentally unstable people from out of the area into Lake County, into Lakeview itself, because there's a government entity that pays you to take care of that position. So what happens if you're from out of the area, you get enough trouble, there's a place that will pay your rent and pay your bills and move you here. But what, what ends up happening is you end up getting in trouble here because you're, you're not changing the behavior, you're just giving them a new place to do what they were doing before. And so, I mean, as far as if it's our local homeless that need a place to stay, I, I'm for that, but, but I, I'm just tired of seeing people take advantage of the system for their own gains to the detriment of the citizens of our county by bringing these people in. And there's, there's many, many that I know that have been brought in from all across the state for that. I've dealt with them. All law enforcement dealt with them. Citizens have had issues with them. But here they are because somebody's making money off that. Those people don't care because they drop them off here and they go back to wherever they came from. And that's one less headache for them. It, it should become our headache because we're trying to do the right thing for our, our people in need and homeless and temporary get on your feet housing. But it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be to the detriment of the county trying to help somebody. That is my opinion. So I think it needs to be set up differently if that is what we want to do to move forward to, to ensure that doesn't happen anymore. That's how I feel. And on this on the same um, on the same bent as about we need to take care of our own people. We have um, people in crisis that have been made homeless not of their own volition in this county, but because of domestic violence, and they're afraid to go home, and they have no place to go. There's no resource for them. There's no <clears throat> temporary housing for them. <clears throat> I know one woman who's camping all over the desert because she's afraid that the husband that was released from jail who tried to kill her is going to come to her house and try to kill her. She does have a house, but she's just afraid to go there. So. Crisis intervention is very important, and if we can come up with some temporary housing for our own people that are in crisis, 
Yes, I feel that that's that that's what we should do. And we also have children caught up in the fray of all of this. So as far as homelessness and the mental health issues, that's a huge problem for the whole state. It's not just our problem. But I agree with Buck, take care of our own first. I have a question. Sure. Do what are the Aspen houses up here? Is that supplied by Klamath residents? It's a low do you know the answer to that, Ginger? I don't know the answer to it, but can you hold the question until all of them have answered oh, okay. this one? And then we'll come back to you. Okay? Okay. All right. Um, I think I could actually answer that really quickly too, but um, the uh, the thing when we talk about housing for the homeless and, you know, really, I, I've been liaison to mental health and public health since I started, and one of the things that we run into is housing. I'm on the housing committee for trying to work out some of these things for low-income housing, whatever that actually entails, because low-income is different for every other person. Um, and affordable housing, same same thing. It's uh, it's a huge challenge to try and figure some of these things out in terms of wanting to help some of the people that need it in our community. Because the reality is, is yes, some of them are people that have come in from other places and transplanted, and others are part of our community. They didn't come to Lake County because it was because of all the services that are afforded to them here. They came here because they may have had a connection because there was family or someone they knew, so they came here. So those people are our people. How do we help them? I'd like to know where the churches are, honestly, sometimes. I've had people in my home. I've taken people into my home before and given them a place to help them get back on their feet. My wife is sitting right here in the audience and she knows what we've done in our home to try and open it up to people who needed a place to stay. And honestly, I think that this is also a whole community issue. When we see homeless and we see people that need help, it is something that I think that our whole community has to take into account. When we talk about housing for the homeless, what I think sometimes that falls into the category of is government subsidized housing. And so now we have the government entity that has to come in and try and figure out how to solve the problem. It doesn't always work. <clears throat> I, my wife and I have been homeless twice in the last 10 years. Um, I lost my business and we moved into a travel trailer and didn't kill each other and we lived there for 18 months. And then we had an arsonist burn our house down um, while I was working for the sheriff's department. And um, so I know what it's like. On the other hand, is we had the community come alongside us and help us out more than anything. We can't, one the reason why I'm running for commissioner is because of the support of our community. Um, but homelessness, I'm not, I'm not here to give a handout. I love giving a hand up and I'm more than willing to do whatever it takes to give somebody a fresh start and a hand up. But I'm not into handouts. And um, they need to be working and we're looking for jobs and then graduate up and then move out and then buy their own or rent their own place. But um, that's how I would see it. And so. Um, but most of it is mental health or abuse or person. Or, but if you're not willing to help yourself a little bit, I'm not going to help you. And James made a great point. The churches need to make sure they're stepping up and doing their thing. Thank you, Mark. I don't think I can even attempt to answer how to solve that problem. All I know is it's going to take everybody. Of the churches, the sheriff's department, the county commissioners, the mental health, the health district, you know, the, ho the hospitals, because there's no one answer. And I agree with Mark too. If you go look around the business that are open, there's help on it. 
Stickers in about every window, no matter where you go in this, wherever I've been. So we need to get people into those, help them get qualified. And I know that drugs are a major reason we have homeless people. And if I ever thought I could solve that, I wouldn't be here. I'd be way up the country. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's my opinion on it. It takes all of us, not one person, not one group, but everybody in the community to come together. Because there are people who cannot do it for themselves. And they need the help. Getting that sorted out is above my pay scale. Thank you. Let's see if we can add on to this question here. Do you have the question? Oh, I just wanted an explanation for the Aspen houses that are here in Lake County. Do those residents apply through Klamath Falls humanitarian businesses? Okay, so the Aspen Court uh, housing, is that HUD housing? Is there someone here that can answer that? Ma'am, from what I know of it, uh, people have life through the Climate Housing Authority, and there, there's a few apartment complexes, so it's a lower rent, rent control apartments. Uh, they're not saying they're from Climate Falls, I think a lot of them live here just the, the administration is from the Climate Housing Authority. That's what I know it to be. Uh, we don't have a Lake Housing Authority. Klamath Housing Authority works for both Lake and Klamath. And so, yeah, Klamath Housing Authority will have a part to play in some of the placement of some of those folks um, if they need help. And there's a lot that goes into that program and how the housing works. I've never gone through the application process myself, but uh, most of those folks are Lake County residents, to my understanding. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. All right. Did I see a hand up back here? And I did microphone. You're okay? Um, oh, I don't want to talk. I think they would hear me. Okay. Uh, the Climate Housing Authority, they, like I say, they have Aspen Court, and that's for low income, and it's mainly, uh, I think, seniors or a little bit less right. than that. And then there's the Commons that's um, from 9th Street down there that help them. See, there's quite a few buildings there that are for low income also. And then there's another group that is right across from the examiner. And then there's some up at the north end. Right. But did you have units. a question or were you just helping explain? I was just saying, you know, you were okay. wondering about the, what we had. Okay. We have that for low income. Right. Yeah, we have more than just one site. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Several. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, so the next question. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, my question is, is we have government subsidized housing. Um, there were some that want the supportive housing that is also government subsidized. But my question is, is as county commissioners, isn't there a way that the county can not necessarily enforce, but maybe encourage uh, property owners, landlords, because what I've noticed, I am a landlord, is it's almost class warfare in Lake County, and there, there's those that cater strictly to the working class, hospital, background checks, blah, blah, blah. But then there's a percentage of Lake County that can't qualify for that as a housing opportunity, and then they get forgotten. So and the rent, is your question? Well, the rent is super high, thousand bucks for a two bedroom house in Lake County. Is, Bend rates, but it seems like they're fleecing the community. Isn't there a way that the county commissioners can come up with a way to incentive their, maybe through their taxes, maybe through, uh, maybe they could offer some sort of subsidized program so these landlords will take a risk on these people? There is just not the facilities, there is not the housing. But there are people in this community that are in houses that would be condemned if it was actually enforced. Okay, gotcha. So would somebody like to address this? I can start. Um, 
So your question was, is there anything the county can do to incentivize a, a landowner preventing a, a by lowering the rate so somebody else can move in? Yeah. Um, what, what I've seen is obviously people are protective of the property, correct? And some of these renters that can't afford better housing isn't a, a lot of that comes from from drug issues and, and law enforcement issues and they're just not some of them aren't the best of people and so and then once somebody comes into the landlord tenant law it takes moving them out to get them out so i, I think myself it would be difficult to, to tell you who you had to let stay in, in your house and they, they meanwhile they're destroying it doing whatever they do i'm not i wasn't speaking about the because there's government subsidies for the criminal element for drug addicts. There's availability for government funding for those individuals. Oh, I'm right. talking about the rung above that are on the verge of becoming criminals because they cannot afford okay, to live. Okay, just people that maybe don't have the best paying job in the world, stuff like that? It's like you. There's very few good paying okay. jobs. Well, if, I, I believe there's some looking. Could be some looking into that. To maybe a little bit of a tax break for for being able to provide that kind of housing to where it's more feasible to them might be a place to start. Um, I can't tell you all the answers, I don't have all the answers, but I, I believe there's some wiggle room there to where everybody could benefit. Now you got good tenants in and maybe those people are gonna fix your house for you. And your your tax is a little cheaper, so you're gonna have to make such a big payment, so you don't, you don't need quite as much rent money. That's, I think there's some room to work there. So I was a landlord and I had 14 rentals. I had fourplex that was HUD housing exclusively. The HUD housing, I really liked having that because I knew that the rent would be paid right on time, every month by the government. The bad part of the HUD housing was um, occasionally, and I, I'm guilty of this, I preferred having the older um, more mature people on HUD housing because they kept to themselves and they did not destroy my place. When I did take a chance on those uh, questionable people that you were saying that are on the borderline of perhaps criminal activity, um, I had some a tenant high on meth try to light a campfire in the middle of one of my units and almost burn everybody down. So it is quite um, a, an ask when you ask a landlord to take a chance <clears throat> on somebody who is who might cause harm to their property because they still have to pay the mortgage on that property. They still have to pay the insurance on that property and they still have to make sure that if everything does burn down, that the rest of the people have some place to go. So. Yes, we could probably incentivize to get people to, and it, it's hard to qualify a place for HUD. There's a lot of hoops to go through in order to have a property or a rental um, qualify for HUD housing. It's not easy to do. So um, maybe helping a landowner get through that process, that might be something. Thank you for the question, Sonia. There is no way I can answer that question in full in two minutes, okay? I'm just telling you that straight up. So I'm not even gonna really try, but I will say this is that when you start bringing in government subsidies in order to pay landlords most of the rent or part of the rent or anything else, that will contribute to the rent going up, which is one of the reasons why you see rent climbing, because there is a lot of government subsidized rent controls already in place. And for individual pieces of the of the population, individual groups. That's one of the things I think I was kind of getting out of the question was what can we do to help the situation because these people qualify for this, but these people only qualify for that. It's because most of these things are government earmarked dollars for specific programs. I mean, the housing committee, this is one of the big things that we deal with all the time. When these big grants come out for some of these different projects. These dollars can be used for low-income housing. These dollars can be used for affordable housing. These dollars can be used for this. Those are those are different things. 
And we're struggling most of the time just to understand what the state legislature meant by them and how they're using these terms. So these dollars come out and they are available and there are different things that we can use them for in our community. But we also need people that are willing to put the time in to find contractors, which we have a shortage of, to go and build some of these projects and get some of these houses and homes up to the standard that are sometimes required by the grants. So um, I've got 30 seconds left, but I'm not going to try and use it all up on explaining this. This is something that really, we've been trying to work at this for a long time. Are there things that we can do as a, as a local government to help? Yes. But when you bring the government into it, when you start using Caesar's dollars, when you start eating at that table, don't be surprised when there's a demand on you and there's restrictions on how you can administer the program. It won't always make sense. Um, so it's all about supply and demand. And so when you don't have enough houses, people can raise the rent. And that's part of capitalism. Um, how we fix that is we build more houses. Um, I just told Mr. Williams this week that I want to invite a man by the name of Randy Cox, who runs the Casita program. I can't tell you what the acronym is, but it's in Climate Falls. Uh, and they started a housing um, program where the county put money in, the banks put money in, and the contractors put money in and they build houses and guarantee um, somebody will buy it by that time the house is sold and then the contractor moves on to the next house. Um, he's going to be coming to Lakeview in the next couple of weeks and he can explain the program really well and when he makes the date of it's going to be at one of our commissioners' meetings. Um, I have invited the housing committee, and it's a great idea. They've already built seven houses in Pine Falls, and they're all sold prior to them being completed. And so um, it's a great program. We have to have more housing, and that will reduce rent. By the time everybody's got a place to live, then it goes down. And Solves the problem. I agree with everything that was said. Uh, mostly, if we progress, uh, provide build more houses, that should help keep the rent down. Also helps keep the property value down. But everybody else is trying to sell a house, uh, and I don't know if that's a bad thing either. But anyway, there's got to be something people can do, and we're short of houses. Out in Adel, uh, if you need to find an employee, you got to find a house. You know, it's not out there, so you go, I don't need that employee. Just get somebody to drive from Lakeview, basically, to Adel. It's a hard deal, you can't pay them enough. So, if we had an easier way to get a new to build new places. I think this thing that Mark was talking about sounds like a great idea. Talk to you later. Okay, thanks. We're going to move on to, uh, we've got three more questions here, so we're going to try and work through these quickly. Um, what do you feel you bring to the table? Why don't you start down here? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> I, I've been working that whole thing. Uh, all what I have to offer is a uh, lifetime experience raising three daughters and a son, uh, which gave me more experience than I really thought I ought to have in life. Uh, to uh, the jobs I've worked on, mostly agriculture, law enforcement for seven years, in a county that was a lot like Lake County, where we had our county seat and all the major businesses were except on the south side or on the west side. We had resident officers on the on the east side. 
stuff like that. I mean, it's a lot of the same issues as far as law enforcement so that I lived through, so I know what everybody's dealing with. And then uh, being on the ADL school board for years, the ESD board for 10 years, uh, this 4-H and FFA sale committee for like 12 years, which again gave me a lot of information back and forth between North and South Lake County, because that's a big part of keeping that whole program together. And uh, working on budgets in a, lot, in a lot of places I've been. So I think I'm running out of time. So thank you. Uh. That old saying, it's not necessarily what you know, it's who you know. And as I've become a commissioner, I've been endorsed by Senator Finley, Congressman Mintz, Rep. Reschke, Rep. Iverson, Rep. Owens, um, Timber Unity. Um, and that's because I got out there and made those connections at the state and federal level. And because without those partners, we're not going to move in a good direction. Um, I've owned my own businesses. Um, I've been at the bottom and I've been at the top, so I know what the bottom's like. And um, I love my community and I love the people in it. And that's why I'm doing this. I think I bring a willingness to understand the issues and people's positions. And what I believe many times what hinders us is the different perspectives around the table and around the room. I, I think I bring three years of experience through some of the toughest years that uh, Lake County Commissioners have had to deal with for a long time. I mean, COVID knocked people, knocked people down. It's been, a, it's been a long year, a uh, long three years. I think I can, I can get through a lot of those things and still build on the relationships and find solutions. I've worked really hard at the state legislature over the last few years in combating cap and trade and working on the temper unity issues that uh, you know, we, we got to see some really big fights that took place in the state that really could have hurt our entire county. And I think by coming to the table, by me being in the room sometimes, I, I was able to bring a calming voice there. I was able to get people to listen that normally wouldn't even talk to each other. I've even got Commissioner Albertson to speak to some commissioners from Multnomah and Clackamas County. Wasn't easy. <laughs> but, uh, but we got to hear each other in our different positions because life is different in Portland than it is here. Very different. We tried to bridge that gap, not just between the rural-urban divide, that gets to be an old saying amongst us as commissioners and across the state, but against really the urban frontier divide. Because Lake County may be rural, but it's, it's tenfold. It, it's so much more than that. So, and it looks like I'm out of time. That's all I have to say. So I feel that every, um, there's the music again. I feel that every um, experience that I've had, life experience that I've had, every uh, career path I've chosen, the degree I chose, the everything has led me here to this point. I have lived all over the world. I have lived in third world countries. I know people, I have talked to um, a lot of people. At one point in my life, raising my seven children, um, they were going to close our small school in Williams, Oregon. Um, that meant that our kindergartners would spend two hours on a bus in the morning and two hours coming home in the evening. That wasn't tolerable. So at, the, at that juncture in life, um, there was a grassroots movement for charter schools. So a group of us decided that we were going to make our school a charter school. And I went to Washington, D.C., and I talked to our congressman, and I told them 
what I had thought and all of the research that I had done um, about charter schools and that we needed the legislature in Oregon to pass charter school, um, the financing of charter schools. And so when I uh, left, we had left for Washington, D.C., we had one charter school in Oregon. The year after, we had nine, and now we have approximately 127 charter schools in the state of Oregon. When I was the risk analyst for Bear Creek Corporation, we had a flood that almost wiped out all of the pear trees and all of the crops in southern Oregon. The national crop insurance um, valued pears at $200 a ton, and our pears were worth $800 a ton. We, I got um, the pear growers to educate the regional flood insurance program, national flood insurance program, and we changed the way that they view pears in the nation, actually. So the question is, what do I bring to the table? Um, I'm not very good at tooting my own horn. I'll give it a shot. But, um, I, I bring a wealth of life experience. I've been a lot of places, done a lot of things. I I've, I've used growing up in Southern California. I've been able to take experiences I've had there, applying it to say law enforcement in rural Lake County, Oregon. If you can see past just a general conception, you can see that whatever life experiences we have have all taught us a lesson. And I think another thing I can, I can bring to the table is the ability to stand and fight for people. I mean, that's kind of my thing. I mean, I'm big, loud, um, and stand for the right and do the right thing. It might not be always a popular thing, but it's got to be the right thing. That's kind of the question. Okay. Are you finished with that question? Okay, good. All right. Um, what are your plans to move our community forward visibly and economically? So I'm going to paraphrase here, but I'm thinking that they mean, you know, how are you basically going to market? I don't know who wrote this question. If I'm taking liberty here, please tell me. But, I mean, you've touched on that. So let's do it again and start. Again, there's lots of things that we can do in order to move our community forward and continue to make differences. I, I think lessening the lessening the cost to bring in business, lessening the cost to build houses, bringing in uh, more workforce uh, to, to build on the trades, getting our young people into the trades so that we can start building on uh, building up our contractors, our plumbers, and all those different things will help. Let the community figure out how they want to see their community grow. You could easily get a politician that comes in and says, oh, I think there needs to be this. I think, I think there, we should have this. That's great, but we don't build businesses. And commissioners don't build houses. That's not our job. Our job is to try and get government out of the way so the independent free market can build on its own. So that you could get, provide maximum opportunity to the young people coming up in the, in the society. I think Christmas Valley has been something that we've really kind of focused on because here in Lakeview you have a town council, you have a mayor. In Paisley you have a town council, you have a mayor. You have that representation locally of the people that truly understand those local issues. The rest of the county does not. We are the only representation they have as commissioners. And so we need to make sure that we're taking that time to understand what their needs are. We've invested millions of dollars. We're helping the community invest millions of dollars in Christmas Valley into the water system. We're taking, we're prioritizing infrastructure. We want to make sure that our railroad has a future because it supports so many of the businesses here. Those are the things that help us sustain and, and provide opportunity for the future. Who wants to go next? Oscar. Um, so, I graduated in 1982 here in Lakeview, and when I started, 
school, there was 123 kids in my class. When I graduated, there was 82. That's how I remember what year I graduated. And uh, when the mills closed down, not only did jobs leave, but our hope left. And you can go down the East Street and see the lack of hope. In Lakeview, when I was a kid, you couldn't get in the gym during the ball game because there, virtually the whole community was there. And by faith, you have to rely on your maker and have the hope and let people um, share that with each other. We can't, the commissioners ain't going to save this place. It's by all of us joining together, being on our knees, and bringing us back to the community that we used to have. It's the only way we're going to move forward. Um, to, for one man or one woman to say that they're going to do this, they're a fool. And it takes you, by faith, and us working together to make our community what it needs to be. Thank you, Mark. There are so many things, uh, like we already talked about, keeping the people, young people, in our trades, in our teaching, in our hospitals, and keeping them here. Uh, I'm not a big person that got to stay home. I think when people go away and come back, they bring better things back with them, good ideas. Uh, if you just live in the same place all the time, you don't know if there's other stuff going on in the world. Uh, for myself, just living in Lake County, I forget that there's a whole other world when you go to the city. And I'm kind of like, I don't want to be here. But you have to know that that stuff goes on. And I think as far as uh, like what everybody said so far, the only thing I would really, really want to work on, and it's not going to be something easy that you're just going to raise your hand, it's going to happen, is getting the big, the heavy trucks, the long trucks from Winnemucca to Medford. If we can get those trucks to go through that road, create all kinds of opportunities for Lake County, for our farms, for the things we produce, to get stuff in so we can build things. Thank you. Can you ask the question again? I don't want to get off in the weeds. Okay. Um, what are your plans to move our county forward physically and economically? And so, so like um, Commissioner Williams said, that is not really the job of the commissioners. We can inspire and encourage, and um, but the primary thing that we can do right now is really encourage our code enforcement officer to stick with his job, not quit us, um, and to get our Lake County cleaned up. It needs to be a place that people want to come. We have so many beautiful monuments as far as uh, national lands and state lands and you know federal lands, beautiful places. We have crack in the ground up where we are. We have all sorts of beautiful places here in Lake County that people would want to come to. We have the dunes, we have uh, the uh, bike MX uh, raceway up there in Clement, or I'm sorry, in Christmas Valley that people come to and they come to shoot rats and all sorts of things. Fun things to do, but the, the cloud over everything is the mess, that, that's the visual mess. There's no disguising it because when you look across the desert, there's nothing in your view except for this sometimes a horizon of mess. So I'm an avid photographer as well. I love photography. And there's nothing worse than than taking a beautiful sunset photo and seeing a line of debris in the horizon. We have a beautiful county. We need to inspire people to take pride and to love it as much as we do. And I think our code enforcement officer was the best idea ever. Just, could I have a quick little rebuttal clarification? Um, 
just to clarify, our code enforcement officer is not quitting. We're not going to let him quit. All right. I agree with many things these folks have said. Uh, as far as the cleaning up our town, I believe that will go a lot, a long way toward economic development. Because, like I referred to earlier, you know, if this doesn't, you drive into town from out of the area looking for, I need a place to open up my new business. And do you see a place that's in shambles after another place that's in shambles and so on and so forth? And people living in camp trailer right along the main street with broken down cars sitting up on blocks, you're not going to want to stay here. So you're going to look for somewhere else. And that being said, if we can get, get new businesses to come in, I know in the past there has been some businesses that have been, been driven away from this county, not by anybody up here, but that would have provided good living wage jobs. And with the good living wage jobs, we get the young people of a trade that want to work. And then those people, all of a sudden, now they're, they're looking to build a house down the road. And, uh, well, they, they get a house built. Well, that's another house available down the road in Lakeview. And then once we start doing that, then we can start new businesses are going to come in on E Street, maybe, or, or somewhere else. And, and then another business is going to want to come in. And it, it's kind of like the old saying, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You start small and keep building on it. We can grow something good, but and like has been said a couple times over, we're just we're not here to make that decision for you. We're just here to to speak for you and do what the citizens decide. Uh, I'm done. All right, we have one more written question. What is one strength you have that will help you as a county commissioner? It's a two part question. And what is one weakness in yourself that you will work on when you become county commissioner? So two parts. That's a great question. Um, I think my strength is is that I'm pretty personable. Um, I've always been a person that supported the underdog, and so I kind of, I kind of thrive on that. Um, and I love sticking up for people and sticking up for our county. And you know, when the when the governor didn't get Warner Creek, that was a great victory. I I gotta say though, you know, as a commissioner, you can't do it by yourself. We have a great team at the county. We have great partners. And so utilizing our partners and our county's employees and our state reps and our state senators, because um, we can't do it alone. My biggest weakness is um, I'm not very tech savvy. And so I have problems with computer stuff and I'd like to learn that better um, because I am pretty illiterate in the technological field. Um, things that, uh, well, I'm struggling here honestly to find things find one single thing and I, I, I think uh, one of the things that I could bring and one of the things that I have brought is my ability to listen and hear what people are trying to say and what they're trying to tell me. It's It has been difficult throughout the last few years when people say, okay, James, you know, I want a list of all the things that you've done and uh, that you've done. And I, I'll confess it is in nearly impossible to come up with a list of something that I've done alone. Because I have worked with so many other people to make those things happen and all the different projects that I've worked on. It, it, with your commissioner, there's there's very little that you do. Okay, yeah, I can sit up here and I can say, yeah, I had a lot of gifts on the roads and everything else. You know, maybe I work with a lot of the stuff on the road department and we 
we, we understand what we're trying to do, we have a goal. Um, but I don't lay asphalt. I don't go out there and I'm not shoveling any of the oil. So you, I think it goes back to what Commissioner Robertson said, is that you have a team of people around you. And I think that's one of the, the things that I, I really enjoy bringing to the table. My weaknesses, there are so many, so many weaknesses that I think that when you all come to grips with, this job will test you, it will push you to your limits, and you will learn your limitations. And uh, so I think if there was one thing that I could really hone in on, it's the ability to listen more to my wife when she gives me uh, advice. And I'm working at that every single day. So I think that my biggest strength, or I have, I have several strengths, I think. Um, I'm a very hard worker. I've been working since I was a little girl. We all had chores when we were small. I'm the oldest of six. So I've been a mother my whole life. Um, my first job was um, setting chokers for my dad's logging business. And then I got a promotion to run the skitter. Um, I have worked very hard my whole life to um, overcome a lot of things. Um, I was an abused and battered child who uh, grew up to be a battered wife. And so that's how I know what these uh, women of domestic abuse go through. Um, and the crisis center is heavy on my heart. Um, and the support for women and children of domestic violence is very heavy on my heart. I know that it's a team, and I've gotten to know this team of commissioners that we have. I go to as many of the commissioner meetings as I possibly can. The ones that I can't, I I'll review the videos later because I do work and work hard. I work long hours. Sometimes I volunteer my time because I know that the Park and Rec has a small budget. So I work a lot of time without pay. <clears throat> I work um, for the North Lake Health District as well. And so, um, although that is a strength, that is also a weakness because I'm kind of a workaholic when I'm not working. I'm working at the ranch, uh, wrestling cattle and training my horse. I have a Paisley Mustang. and. Um, I don't know. Work is fun for me. I love working. Here again, to your own hard time, I guess. Uh, my my biggest strength, I guess, was my ability to, to be able to stand and for the for what I believe to be the right thing and not waver. And like I say, I mean, it's it's not up to me to decide what the right thing is. It's up to me to, to fight for said right thing. Um, my biggest weakness, I kind of lean with Mark on the whole text and everything. I am not. It's I have learned if it doesn't work, unplug it, plug it back in, see what happens. That's that's how I fix things. And it seemed to work. Really, you have to come to track. But uh, also on top of that, um, sometimes I get. <laughs> maybe too passionate about things that, that if it's something close and near to me maybe that I need to sometimes step back and see the bigger picture and I'm getting the finger and I, I, I don't have much more to say guys oh, thank you uh, biggest weakness probably that I have is I'm um, human being and the second one is, I've never been a county commissioner, so I don't pretend to know what those people go through. And my biggest strength has always been uh, when you want something done that you believe is right, you don't give up. There's always one more thing you can do. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes our question um, and answer. But what I wanted to do was really give you all the opportunity to mix with the candidates. And we've got Sheriff Taylor and um, Tom Rourke over here that you can have a conversation with. So I think it'd be a good time to break now. Um, we had planned to go until around 7.30. This gives you plenty of time to talk with folks individually.
And um, I really appreciate you coming here tonight. This is a good group, and you have really good questions. So I'm very happy about that. And thank you for your time and your good answers. And, um, yeah. All right. So I think we've got some refreshments over here. We've got drinks, water. I'm not sure what kind of eats we've got, but there's something there. So please help yourself. And thanks for coming. <laughs>